welcome to a very Burn special it. episode of Was That in Good Taste? You're Burn probably it. asking yourself, why is it so Burn special? It. And I'm going to tell you right after Burn this. It. My name is Chandler Phillips, and with me, as always, uh, is James Beery. That's me. Before we do stuff, like, comment, subscribe, call to action. Remember, we subsist off of your engagement. Without so you, we are nothing. We exist not when this camera's off. And the reason this episode is so special and fun is, is because we're figuring out how do you do anything, things, do you even do things? And, it's and how a, do you do them? And how do you do them? The orders of operations that run our mundane existence and how you convince yourself that some things are the right things and other things are the wrong way to do things. So, AKA the right way to do things versus the wrong way to do things. Precisely. Um, and to start that off, we have a very fun little cocktail that uh, we found courtesy of Cocktail Flow. Um, we aren't sponsored by them, but we do. Uh, we do take rely their cocktails, them. make them poorly, and then present them to you as if they're original material. But in actuality, it's just kind of we changed something. Our little, our little, st- our little take. Who's to um, say that they they can't they can say it's the right way if they want, but. I kind of like our way of doing things. And what's our way of doing it? Well, real quick, I just want to give credit where credit's due. Okay. This is based on the El Presidente, courtesy of Smuggler's Code by uh, Martin Kate with Rebecca Kate. Um, they are the founders and owners of Smuggler's Cove, and it's one of the most acclaimed tiki bars of the modern era. This is again, courtesy of Cocktail Flow. So, um, this is not original material. <laughs> um, we're learning. We're exploring. Come on. Uh, American. Oh, it's uh, from the Depression era, and it has a bunch of different uh, tiki cocktails, tropical cocktails, etc. cetera. And, um, yeah, check out their book. It's pretty dope. And that's where we got the El Presidente. It is. White rum. Dry vermouth. Dry curacao. And grenadine. And that is what constitutes the uh, traditional, or the at least the the recipe that I'm looking at here. But we didn't have any dry vermouth, so you know what we did? No, we didn't have dry curacao. Or yeah, we had dry vermouth. We don't usually have dry vermouth, and we had dry vermouth on hand today. We did not have dry curacao, so instead we used a little Cointreau because it kind of does the same thing. Like curacao, it's like it's well, we talked about the blue curacao, oh, and yeah. it is of a f- of a fruit. Yes, a citron. Of, uh, um. Of the Caribbean? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. This is it's, it's called a carousel, I believe. And when you don't add a fuck ton of blue food coloring to it, you just have dry curacao. And it's essentially just a citrus-based um, sweet uh, liqueur. So, so we Quantro, don't have. So, we don't, so Quantro kind of filled that, that space. Um, I have it. Already pre-made, pre-mixed in the glass. And we've we also it. like a big sip taken out of it. Okay, so this is I, I already got to say that that's d- no, you can't start drinking it before we start talking about it. I had to taste it in order for us to know that it was worth presenting to but our then audience. Then you're not giving them the original. Like so, in this situation, what comes first, the tasting, the preparation? Or just having any general idea of what this episode was going to be about to start off. Well, I think that you need to make sure your glass is properly chilled, as it is. Is that specifically for the El Presidente? Or for is all that kind of beverages that are in kind of like a martini glass. Mm. Uh-huh. The beverage, which is made, then chilled to be at an appropriate temperature. And you've already pre-mixed these ingredients at a chilled temperature. I did, of course. Shaken? Stirred? Shaken. Wow, oh, look a, at that this. That was a really nice pour. And that's to the I brim. I hate these fucking glasses. Because it's a martini glass or because it has no stem? I kind of like the, the low center of gravity of them. I think it's better this than... This shit is so stupid. They're cute. They're like if Smurfs had martini glasses. Okay, what do you think? What do you think? First, I was holding on to the mic stand for stability. Okay, <laughs> you <laughs> see me? I was like connected to nothing. Like yeah. two hands, 
You know, like holding on to it tightly as I slowly reach out for my fucking cocktail. You just needed to have the OSHA approved three points of contact. You had a hand, two feet planted. I didn't have my harness. You- um, this is so good. Wow. Okay. I didn't expect this. Mm-hmm. Okay. What I'm getting, I'm getting bright. I'm getting something a little dry, mildly floral. Interesting that the carousel has not taken over the entirety of the drink. And the grenadine, being literally half a teaspoon, does very little to affect the flavor, actually. It adds a little sweetness. It adds just a touch. It's like it's, it's giving it a slight uh, pink color. It's the simple syrup additive where it doesn't like overwhelm. You're not just throwing a bunch of sweet, but it gives just the tight or the, the tiniest little um, berry depth to it. Or I guess the pomegranate flavor, and um, it it bolsters with sweetness, but it does not overwhelm the spirit nor the um, bitterness of the curacao, or in this case, Quattro. This is so good. Okay, I dare I say, refreshing. You know what? Hmm. This gets the was that in good taste stamp of approval. Kachunk, kachunk, um. Delicious, easy to make. Okay, I mean, you take what was it again? One point five ounces of white rum, mm-hmm. uh, 0.75 ounces of dry vermouth, correct? Point five ounces of the dry carousel. Uh, we didn't have, so we used the orange carousel. Um, then the teaspoon, half a teaspoon of the grenadine, so shaken. Let me ask you this. Does it make a difference the order in which you add ingredients in a drink that's as simple as this? I, I'll say I don't think so. It depends on what the drink is. Hmm. Um, because if you take room temperature whiskey yeah, and you place it into a warm shaker... And yeah. you introduce cold ice. The ice is going to start to melt. It's going to get a lot of water. And it's going to transfer the heat from your hand easier uh, than you if put the, the ice first. So you put the ice first, then the container will be chilled, which will partially also chill the whiskey faster when it comes in, mm. introducing less water. We can kind of see here. You've been keeping you've been keeping this one on ice so that it's nice and chilled even after everything's been mixed together. Because it's not delicious if it's warm. So it seems like one of the key ingredients in this is the temperature. Yes. If you were to serve this drink in a bar, how would you accommodate that kind of um, essentialness? Of it's easy. This is, you premix this. You have a pre-batched. Yeah, what? Of course. You, you pre-batch. You pre-batch this. Uh. You keep the glasses in the fridge. There you go. Yeah, that 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 tracks. You just keep them in like the in the beer fridge. That's gonna take up a lot of room, especially if it's martini glasses. Oh my fucking god! Like it's gonna be. Wh- how many cocktails do you think? It, it like one hundred and twenty-seven. Ten, ten will fit in probably like a. Like, that's, like, not even half a 64-ounce, like, pitcher. You're telling me you can't put 32 ounces in the fridge? Yes, you can. Okay, you could probably do, like, two pitchers that are, like, 32 to 48 ounces. You know, like, it'll be fun. It'll be cool. It'll be all right. It'll be Gucci. If it sells. If it moves. If it moves. This is, like, a nice cocktail. I I think this would be a great, um, like, event cocktail. Like, if you were having a... An event where you wanted to have like a signature drink type deal. Oh, yeah, because like the bartender a, would make it every time. Yeah. You know, the bartender would come, you would come, and it's like a row of bartenders, you know, and they have uh, one beer, a Sam Adams, right? Well, they might have, they'll have a beer, they'll have a light beer. Yes. They'll have like a red wine, a white, ro- white wine, usually like a Sutter Home or a Barefoot or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, maybe. A rosé. And then they'll have, like, two um, fun cocktails that are, like, event-coordinated. Uh, I'm t- I'm kind of picturing that this is, like, a um, like an event 
for like the WWF. Like they're it's a gala and they're like trying to trying to do fundraising to like help animal preserves. And then <laughs> and so like this this cocktail is the like bird of paradise. Um or the or even the um stop skinning Martin's martini because um Martins are hunted for their delectable fur. And um this would be a martini that reminds you, hey. Oh look, it's batched. Oh that's terrific. And then you can just pour it out. And then you know what? You pour out this cocktail. Me, as a as a potential donor, as a potential silent auction participant, I'd be like, oh, the service here is amazing. And this, I mean, because seriously, what do you do, mm. right? It's uh, it's the vodka, the vermouth, the the dry curacao, and the fucking grenadine. You literally just so have them lined up right there. You have two drinks. It's so both sophisticated. Drinks, like it's two cocktails, and effectively they're both gonna be lined up like one of those syrup bays with the two things so mm-hmm. literally you can build a cocktail like this one two, two three four that makes it be like really fast you don't even have to do that you could just have like the dry vermouth and the other stuff already pre-batched and then just have the syrup and no, i think it's fun to, it is fun to do the whole cocktail but it's not it's not, it. hard, it's not hard to, it's not it's not hard to do that's true you know and it definitely gets me in the mood to drop like Probably fifteen grand on a painting done by an elephant. Done by an elephant. Yeah, the elephant has the paintbrush and is like, well, what? Because of the, it's their nose. It's like every time it's like uh, the handler's like, oh, Charlie, the elephant painted another painting. And it's like an okay painting, but because an elephant painted it, it's like amazing. Like it's per- I mean, it turns out it's her painting. <gasps> That's how they get to move their own paintings. So I married an elephant painter. Haven't we all? What do you what are your th- thoughts, feelings, opinions on this drink as far as like what it evokes deep in your soul? Where where do you see yourself? It's interesting. Uh this is not the kind of drink that I think that I would order. But this is definitely the kind of thing that I can see a lot of, like, we have a friend. We have I'm a ca- friend. I'm going to call her Jay, because I think that's funny. Her name is Jay. She would love this shit. She'd love this shit. She'd I'd love tell this. you what, she'd drink this drink. She'd drink it? She'd drink it down and go to town. Wait. Can I have some? You can drink this drink with me. We will fly upon the sky. It's that kind of drink. I can have this drink. This drink. And to I say to my brothers in the land, we fought for this day. We live. We stand. Freedom. To the crown. Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> Disney's going to get us. Oh, for sure. <laughs> if we're ga- we're going to get got. It's a matter taste. of time. So. So. Well, that's a fine. fine. Um, okay, I'm done with the bed. I'm going to. I'm just kind of. Oh, finally. <laughs> My dogs are barking. There we go. Now, let's see if anybody steps in it. All right, so this week, I, all right, the minute that I saw this document, I got super excited because to me, it just screams pedantry, yeah. okay? It's like, how pedantic can we get? Buckle in, kiddos, because here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so this episode is a fine how do you do where we discuss the minutia and orders of operations of mundane life. Uh there's many ways to skin a cat, metaphorically speaking. No cats were harmed in the making of this episode. So let's get down to it and describe exactly, uh, describe and debate the way we do things that you don't think about doing. And to start us off, I got just just one, one question for you, James. 
because this is this will be the amuse bouche to ooh, this ooh, to this ooh, discourse. Ooh. How? Okay, but when you walk into the shower, when you step into the shower, you start soaping up. What do you start with first? So, there's two ways to approach this question. There's two <laughs> schools of thought when it comes to. <laughs> Yes. What is what is school number one? When it comes to showering, there are two schools of thought. One is the get yourself damp, moist, and or wet method. Um, I personally think that this is the work of mad people. But hey, if that's what you if you want to walk directly into the shower, get yourself wet before you soap up. That's on you. I personally dip my arms. I give my arms a little lather. It's like dipping my toe in the water. Uh-huh. Then I go arms. Yeah. Then I go like body, you know, torso. Uh-huh. Yeah. In then the in the water first? No. I I, I stick my arms in. I get like a little soapy. I gotta get like I gotta get acclimated. Are you washing yourself at the? Are there parts of you that have soap on them, but not yet water? No. When you introduce the soap to your body, you're also like. Introduce here's the thing, you do get yourself a little bit damp because th- okay, there's natural humidity in the shower, and my shower is still hitting me and splashing me a little bit. Uh-huh. I just don't go under the water and give myself a head to toe wet first. You, you don't know? do like a precursor rinse down, no, because wait, wait, I find it. Wait, to this was this was just an amuse bouche question. I this was not. <laughs> This was not supposed to spark just <laughs> interrogation, but now, now I have questions. It's, it's, you don't get completely wet first before. I love taking showers, but when I take a shower, every time I take a shower, which is every day, I take like an hour long shower because I have a hard time transitioning. Okay, from tell the me outside tell temperature. Me you grew up in a place that wasn't in the middle of a drought. No, <laughs> <laughs> never, <laughs> never. I literally have never had that problem. I have an issue moving from the room temperature to the shower temperature, which is less, but coming from the shower temperature, I'm about to fuck you up. I do not leave the bathroom unclothed. What? I dry off in the fucking bathroom, and I get dressed in the bathroom because it gets so fucking cold in my house. But aren't you wet as you put the clothes on? I just said I dry myself off. No, but the steam from the shower is there, and like there's just ambient moisture and humidity. You can turn the shower off. Yeah, but the the humidity still. My, so, you, how humid is your apartment? That like after you turn the shower off, is it like ten minutes later? The you have the door is, closed, like, clanging to the fucking walls. No, <laughs> you don't. Well, uh, how hot do you get your shower? Pretty hot, actually. And there's no, like, just ambient humidity? No, there is a little bit, but, like, the you moisture. dry yourself off, and you're, like, dry, and the air is just a little humid. And then you put on maybe some shorts and a shirt, maybe your slippers. You know, it just gets cold in here. But you're not getting, like, well, do you have a robe? Have you ever been a robe person? I do not have a robe. I have, I have a robe, never been a robe person. I would love a robe. I think I would love a honestly. I if I if I had a robe, you strike me as I a robe person. Probably would not get dressed in the fucking bathroom. <laughs> but it's just, I'm cold, okay? Oh, it's not unreasonable. Ro- I'm not fucking doing it because I'm like this is the best way to do it. I do it because I get out the shower and I'm so fucking cold. And then if I go in my room, it's like I just cannot deal with the shift in temperatures. It makes me all shaky and shit. I can't deal with it. Okay, I I wash my arms first. You wash your arms first. It's not and on purpose, what? but your hands touch the soap. So you go, you start hands and yeah, then go work your way up? Yeah, because the soap is there and I'm lathering. So I start lathering the loofah, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm lathering the loofah. And then every time I lather the loofah, I go, ah, well, you know, because when I was a kid, I remember one time I had like dirt here. And it was like really grimy and I felt like I took a shower. <laughs> and it, just, mm. it was like gross. So every time I shower, I'm like, okay, I'm like lathering. And I'm like, oh, you know, let me just make sure I get a little scrub here. I feel like you might miss that, you know. I I actually stopped using a loofah. I I used to use a loofah. You just say you use your hands. Well, yeah, and a bar of soap. But you, I prefer an exfoliating bar of soap. But the problem is, I'd use a loofah, and 
it wouldn't exfoliate so much as I would just like scratch the shit out of my like it would it would be too abrasive. I just your hands, Chandler? No, with a loofah. I'm saying, but now just your hands and a bar of soap? Yeah. Your hands cannot like maintain the suds. You're like wasting suds. It's not that it doesn't work. But that's what the bar of soap is for. It's not that it doesn't work. It's that it's less effective. You're wasting soap. Because as your fa- as the soap is developing the foam, right? Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. washing away. Whereas the loofah or your sponge or even, God forbid, a fucking washcloth. If you're doing that, you're a fucking maniac. It's like retaining some of the unused suds. You just have the bar in your hand. You're literally allowing the water to just wash away your money. Well, no, I'm like, I'm it, so I, I start off, I jump in, I both feet first. I leap into the shower. I bound into the shower. I've only hurt myself a handful of times doing this, but I, I immediately full stream of water, which is rough sometimes because my apartment's uh, water heater, it's like a tankless water heater and it doesn't always kick on right away. So I'm like, I'm, I'm about sternum deep. You get in the shower before you check the temperature. And I'm like, oh, this is cold. Whoa. And then and then I I leap back out the shower and and sometimes I'll grab a towel and then I'll go check the the tankless water heater to to make sure that it's I see. I see this, by the way, very 100 percent. (laughs) It's just a madman sprinting down a hall and um. You know, you see if it's all right. And then you're like, okay, it's good. And then I, 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 I leap back into the shower. And by this time, hopefully the hot water is turned on. And it's, it's, and it's revving and it's going. And then like full body, head to toe, wet. Like first, I just, I just kind of sit there. And you know, like, you know, like when you just kind of sit and like you put, you put your arm up against the, the wall and you just kind of no. let it you just kind of let it rain down you for a little bit while what you is think happening? and you're just like another fucking day and and then you just get you get fully drenched and then you're like okay and then you hop back out you want it hot 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 or you do it you start it really hot and then you go progressively colder until you start to feel something and then you turn it back to hot and what do you look in the feel anything <laughs> and and then um, you think you think about life a little bit, and it's like how you're like, why? But then you're like, ah, I guess, and because <laughs> otherwise they win. And then you start to soap up, right? You shower like a movie character. <laughs> <laughs> He's like in the shower after like a long night of sleeping. His head rested on his, he, you know, as the weight of the world is washed off of him. Mm-hmm. You know, even though he like didn't really do anything the day before, somehow. Like around him, the filth is like lifted from his body. You know, it's a it's a spiritually cleansing yeah, it's shower. Cleansing. And and then I start. I'll like I'll take the bar of soap and I'll get all soapy. Blah, 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 and I'll have it usually usually in my left hand. Actually, no, wait. Oh, I start right hand and I go left armpit and I go soap left armpit soap chest right armpit switch again. Go down and so up, you wash your hands down first. And I wash my hands first, but then I go. I'm like body wash. Because do you think there are people who lather not in their hands, but there's like a person who takes the soap, rubs it on their loofah, and then they start lathering it up on their shoulder, like in a commercial. Like they put, yeah. the, like they put, they put the body wash directly on the loofah. And then they don't even squeeze the loofah or anything. They just Wait, put the loofah on. You have skin. to give it a couple courtesy squeezes <laughs> just to like no squeezes, no just squeezes. to get the scrubbing bubbles go. They just go direct. Like you it has to be. You can't go dry loofah onto shoulder. Otherwise, you're gonna just like shear well, off here's your the thing, skin. Though, you don't really like loofahs. You're like it's, it's like scratching you up. Me, I love a fucking loofah. I'm scrubbing. I'm getting in there. Oh, it irritates my delicate skin and pores. God. And like I said, this is an amuse boost. Keep going. All right. I'm 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 loving this. How you you're learning. So one of the one of the obvious kind of ones that I thought would be a good example was like with cereal. Cause we all kind of know 
we all know that you do cereal first. There's that famous TikTok from Stephen Johnson where he goes, if I did good, I played it. If I didn't do good, I didn't play it. <laughs> okay, and it's then the one, it's the one. It's like they're talking about putting milk in, or cereal first, and it's obviously cereal first. That's obviously cereal first. It's but why? obviously cereal. But first. why is it cereal? So that's that's the obvious one. But now let me ask you this: It's obvious why. <laughs> Oatmeal, you do water first, then heat it up together. If it's like an instant oat, like a packet oatmeal, or do you boil your water, pour it into the oats? If it's instant, you're supposed to boil the water first. You're yeah. supposed to. If you don't, it gets all gummy because it gets all gluteny because it gets overworked. And then that's why it gets gummy. But if you do it cold water and you do a little overwater it, you stir it Is it, it up. instant oats? No, because yeah. instant oats are, are like, it's like hard cooked. The they're par dried. They're cut really thin. You want to cook them kind of as quickly and delicately as possible because they'll get gummy. And that's just because that's how they're made. They're made for you not to fucking do that. They're made for you to take the boiling water, pour it over it, and it'd be done. Why would you do It's literally made to do that. Because sometimes you're at work, and all you have is a microwave, and so you like you go, yeah, you that's go. Not the, that's not the same as the way it's. You're boop, like, oh, boop, 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 boop. I'm in the office, boop. so I don't have time to. <laughs> I'm making lunch. Beep, I'm making beep. <laughs> mm, instant oats. You're making you're making lunchables at work, right? You're making the pizza lunchable. You yeah. discovered on TikTok that you're supposed to fucking put heat it up apparently in the microwave. Heresy. But trickeration. You, you're I swear to God, if anyone's heating up a lunchable, <laughs> you don't understand the principle of a lunchable. But it's not wrong to to like be at work and be like, oh well, I can't slowly saute some onions, sliver some garlic, you know introduce like you know, that's not wrong because you're at work and you don't have time to like f- you know do it the right way you get a fucking half an hour you're gonna like heat you're gonna get a separate vessel heat up the water and then then if the water not be hot enough put it back in the work microwave because it's not strong enough then like another five minutes heating up the water yeah then introduce then it's like too hot so you have to wait for it to cool down a little bit so actually it's probably not hot enough to fucking cook your oatmeal so then you pour the water in your fucking oatmeal, and then the oatmeal's not fully fucking cooked. You got to put it in the fucking microwave anyway. You end up having <laughs> to still microwave it. Okay. So I say you add water first and then microwave it. That's my just opinion, and I'm sticking to That's it. That's silly. That's an amuse bouche. When, you, when you're in a situation, say you just get out of an Uber or a Lyft or some other rideshare service, and you check your f- pockets to do your 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 things check what do you look for first what do you verify first wallet phones keys phone wallet keys you go come on phone, you already keys. fucking know it's phone wallet keys and you know you know it's phone wallet keys because of some weird arbitrary unknown difficult to explain verbal english ver- fucking linguistic shit well the way you say it yeah but in the way, like you actually checklist in your head, like but what do you? I, why wouldn't I do it the way that I say it? I'm gonna go in my head, phone, wallet, keys. Then I'm gonna check for the keys, then the phone, then the wallet. See, I'll say like out loud or out loud in my head, um, phone, wallet, keys. But I'll check my keys first, and then phone, and then wallet. I think. So, like, I'll zigzag across because I keep my keys on a carabiner on my belt loop. And so I'll, like, boom, bop, boom. And I'll, like, zigzag across me and kind of do, like, a little. While it's um, last for both of us because, no. Well, because. Keys are last for me because if I have my wallet, I'm good. If I have my phone. Oh, if I have my keys, I'm fucked. Or if I don't have my keys, then I know where my wallet is. My, if, if I don't have my wallet, it's in, it's in my house. And so I better have my keys. <laughs> you know, I better have my keys. I guess I don't really like I've had the same keys for like 15 years now. I don't lose my keys. And you have like 
an elementary school janitor's key ring. I have a lot of keys. You got a lot of keys. I bud. got a lot of keys. I don't lose any keys. You have a lot of keys, and you a lot of you have a lot of like pseudo keys where they're not like they're like no. fobs or like no, I have like little key tags. No, that's 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 mine and hers. She has a key. She doesn't have the key. I have the key. Major key alert. But it's for her. It's for her. It might it's my mother's key. But what about the other keys? My my mother's house. But what about the other one? That's you know whose old house. But and then the other one? That's my bike. Oh, but what about the one after that? That's my gym lock. And the one like two more after that. That's for the front door, but it actually doesn't work anymore because they changed it, but it's still for the trash. Come on. No further questions. So what actually instigated this whole episode idea was I was watching an episode of another podcast where they had a discussion that I was like, I've heard this discussion before. And that discussion triggered a back ma- uh, a, a flashback in me to a time during Little League Baseball where I overheard a discussion amongst coaches about swamp ass, how to prevent it, how it occurs. And one was saying to the other that his method for wiping his ass was to wrap like half a roll around his hand until he had a mitten of toilet paper and then he would just scoop like repeated scoops like scoop maybe shed how much some was off. he shitting scoop shed some off or like just like in multiple wipes maybe not scoops i don't know like that's <laughs> you think he's like shitting into his hand with each you like, think and you think psh- he he's like instead of shitting into the toilet like he, he misheard his mother when he was a child you gotta so, you gotta catch it otherwise it'll splash and so he was wiping his ass with one mitten, uh, one toilet paper mitten, and then that would be it. It would just be the one and done because he'd use, like, so much of the roll to get through. And the other guy was like, well, no, you do, like, the bunch method where you get a couple, like, you bunch it up, and then and then it's like um, like, a, like a confetti cannon kind of up there. You don't, you don't fold it into perfect squares? So the, what I've developed... Over <laughs> years of trial and error is I'll probably measure out, depending on the ply, That's it's all contingent on the ply. If you know, you know. Like the, the strong ply ones, you only need about like three or four. If, if, we're, if we're like being serious where you then you take it and you kind of fold, 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 and you have like, like, a, like, a, like a patch. I'm on the edge of my fucking seat. But in like the the lower once you get into the lower plies, especially if you're in a public bathroom, too, this is important too. Depending on how much toilet paper is available and the situation in which you can get more, because like in certain like park bathrooms, they just got those big ass rolls, or like a like a gym, they just got like the two and a half foot fucking just just thimbles of toilet paper. You go, then you do like. Um, like a like a, a half mitt, a half mitt of uh, let's say like eight squares, if it's a single ply, right? And then you can kind of maneuver into a way in which you have like like it covers the part of the hand that's doing the deepest work, but you're able to utilize like you maximize surface area while minimizing the um invasiveness i guess um because you're, you're not doing you're not doing full hand you're not are you afraid you're gonna slip a fist at your asshole no i'm afraid about uh, not afraid but it's the <laughs> the tensile strength of the toilet paper because if i have if i got every finger do because <laughs> it's not a surface area problem because there's give like if it if there was an issue with surface tension then I'd be like, oh, you'd kind of want to bear claw it. But it's not a surface tension issue. It's a, uh, it's just something might slip. Some some drapery might slip. And it's 
getting a finger in the asshole is not my concern. It's getting poop finger when it could be avoided. <laughs> and that's it. It's just avoidable, minimalizing um, avoidable instances. Of I, I just can't stop laughing because you're like, oh, me personally, well, first, I have to take my watch off. Oh, uh, yeah, that. Because, right. And then I just get like the whole forearm and I just kind of give it like a. Wait, with your right hand? Yeah. The whole forearm? <laughs> Do you Usually. mummy wrap your entire? Wait, do you no, like just just get on ass? You know, you just gotta, you just gotta get you just you just gotta get for and I have long arms too. Look at look on the camera. Tell me it's not effective. And if I need more than one wipe, you got the other side of the forearm. Other side of the forearm. The I, obvious. I just can't imagine. That's a strange way to wipe your ass. Not, it's, a, not it's, what a you do. it's a methodic. Oh wait, with not, the, are you talking about the I'm talking the about, mitten? Yeah, that's right. That's, I was. Uh, I still remember it to this. It is fifteen. You're just years overthinking later. a normal. You are just overthinking a normal thing. You're just like sitting in. The, you're sitting in the bathroom, counting. He's like in the bathroom with a notebook. Ah, two ply. Two ply. Two means I must have six squares, but I have to fold the squares in half. Factor in the which, equation. Which means that carry the two. Twelve. Um, actually, if I have you got to take into consideration the velocity of flush because if it's a if it's one of those like older toilets that just kind of like it has to hit a maximum. You mean, um, you want like a government building like a we're oh just yeah suck, we're just like oh my god I love those take a dead body just <laughs> take it you just like just hit the butt you just like the plunger. The arm is like sticking out. It's just like, and it's just gone. It's just, like one of the. It's a. It's a like a drive-through bank vault type. It's of my optimal way of hiding bodies. That's preferred, and the smaller you can dice them, the <laughs> chase easier. preferred way of hiding bodies. <laughs> you just take them to the chase, put them in the tube, and just <laughs> done. Oh my god! Shit, shower, shave. Is Wait, no, I had one more question regarding. Oh, you did yes. Sit or stand? I mean, at home I sit. And okay, so in my last apartment, the the toilet was too small to sit, and so now I've just gotten gotten back in the fashion of standing to to wipe. And sometimes, you know what really helps? Propping up a leg. You know what kills me? What kills you? Oh, okay. So on TikTok, there's a whole thing, right, about women. Being like men go to the bathroom, they use a urinal, and they shave, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously, you wash your fucking hands, but they're like, ah, oh, they didn't even wipe their dick. Can I say that whilst if there's stuff happening, tissue can get used. Tissue is not like a foreign object in the bathroom for 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 a man, mm -hmm. but I would like to say that. Until you shower, just rubbing the piss into yourself really isn't that much cleaner. I'm just saying, it's you're still doing the same thing. You just gotta fucking like clean. Also, I don't like urinals. I don't like these public bathrooms either. But I'm just saying. No, you're right. Why don't we normalize just having like a little bit of toilet paper right next to the urinal where well, you can I, dab yourself? Here's the thing. I usually sit when I'm at home. Because I would, I would just try to use the phone and stuff, you know? I don't like to use urinals and shit. I just have fucking the images of, like, fucking, like, splatter all over the place from, like, a fucking documentary I watched, like, 15 years ago. Well, that's because you have to hit the angle. You have to hit the urinal where it starts to arc. Even at, if like, you a, don't see it. But that's it's a 45-degree angle. You got to... Have you never played a game of pool? You never played a game of piss pool. Is it sitting out there? <laughs> you think there's a person out there? Okay, for people who do not use urinals, right? This oh. is a urinal, okay? A urinal is a porcelain kind of standing toilet. It can sometimes be elevated from the ground. Or it's okay? a trough. Or it could be like I a kinda trough. I kind of like a trough, but I don't like the not privacy of a trough. That's so weird. It's, it's weird to, like, just be, I don't know, have no kind of privacy when you're, when you're pissing. All urinals are not the same, but they all have a similar function, right? There's a thing on the bottom, you pee. And uh, it's always kind of flat 
and it goes into a little slope. It's like uh, a thing in the bottom. A urinal cake, usually. Can you imagine a person going to a urinal and just pissing straight? Just like... <laughs> this. It would it would bounce. It would. That's the other thing. That's the other but who thing. Who taught you? Do you remember being told? How to piss in a urinal? Yeah. Do you think you just got a face full of piss one time? Oh, yeah. No, it's a, tr- <laughs> it's a trial and error thing where, like... Sometimes you just piss so hard, and then you're like, well, I, it's, we're just going. We're not aiming. We're just – and then it immediately – and you're like, god damn it. It's just, all on my – You're just getting the butter. You're just doing the butters. They get stuck to, stuck to your belly button. You're not paying attention. Just shoot. Oh, hamburgers. <laughs> and it sucks, too, when you're like – when you first – before you learn about, like, the trap door and the underwear kind of deal, and then – because I – I'm going to be honest. Who I, uses that? When I have a shirt tucked in that I don't want to have to re-tuck in. Like when you got a shirt tucked in, belt, and all that jazz, it's easier to just do like a... You don't just un- re-tuck everything? Okay. No, I hate to re-tuck everything. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the guy that's in the bathroom with my, my, my hand like, down just, my chin. <laughs> no, I, I don't like to do it. So sometimes I'll do like belt still on, unbutton zipper. I need I just need clearance from the zipper, really. Is that that's the is that too much to ask? No, it's just no those pants, one leg at a time. Oh, when I put on pants or when I piss my pants? Because I'll try to piss both legs <laughs> at the same time. You know, you just hang in the middle, try to try to get it equally. Yeah, just like or y- like you said, you kind of face it upwards <laughs> so you get a Bellagio fountain. <laughs> oh, um, I <sighs> pants legs at times. You know what is fun? And it's not an often treat. It's not often. Not but, often. But when you have, like, some big baggy sweatpants, and, like, the night before, you had taken them off, and you, like, they're the kind that kind of just loop around your ankles, so you have to put your thumbs in in order to, like, get your foot out. But you do that at the same time, and so it looks like, like, the next day when you wake up, the pants are right there, and it's, like, perfectly outlined as if, like, you just got raptured from that position, and they went... <laughs> And then you step into them, and you don't all the way get your heels through, but like you get your your tootsies through, and so then you pull them up at the same time, and then you just kind of do the little like yoink yoink, and then both you, heels. You pop mean out. perfect pants? Perfect pants. You get a perfect pants Monday. Yeah, perfect pants, and, and that's where does what an amateur. Okay, obviously you have to slope your feet at like a forty five degree angle. Mm-hmm. Then you got to scoop. That's the how you slope and scoop, right? That's how you get yourself into it, right? Then you can actually go with depends. I have long arms, right? It's genetic advantage, good for something, right? Then reach down, just grab up, pull them up, Yoink. one hand, one hand, two one pants, one hand. Wow. What what does kind of throw it off is when there's a short crotch in the pants, so you end up just kind of credit carding yourself. Oh, no, no, no. No short crotch. No short no, crotch. No short crotches here. I need. I need. I need room <laughs> for my hoagies. We we need a uh, ample floor space. You know, <laughs> we need we need a basement in these. It's a, it's a place. You know, it's a place to put my chestnuts. To hoard my little goodies. <laughs> <laughs> to put my little snacks. <laughs> it's where I keep uh, my winter's stash of of. Um, I killed it, didn't I? Okay. <laughs> You hop in, you hop into your pants, both legs at a time, like everybody else. Well, no, I do it just so I could feel special about myself. I'm like, this is some real main character energy right now. Everyone else is getting their legs, one pant at a time, and I'm over here ahead of the game, waking up at 1:30 p.m., thinking <laughs> I saved so much time putting these pants on. Now that I've got no now, one can touch me. Now that I've gotten into these pants, I could go to the bathroom and then I can maybe lay back down. Yeah, then I'll take a little nap because I had an eventful morning. So that brings me to what's next in that in that order of operations. Coffee. Okay. Do you poop before you have a coffee? Or do you use the coffee to help you poop in the morning? Interesting. Um I don't really think about it like that. 
I don't really have. That's not really, you know. But you don't uh, plan your day around a coffee shit. But coffee is mm. a diuretic. It gets, in what it is is it doesn't get it loose. It's the caffeine is getting your body excited. Yeah, it does. So your intestines and stuff start going. They're all happy to poop. You know, look at these happy little crackers going right through your intestine system. Right, you know, just all those rits, just straight through. And they're just like, oh, just here we do go. A little poopy dance. Um, Are you talking about all the little snacky snacks I have before going to bed? Yeah. Which that's another thing. Some people are going to tell you, have all your snacky snacks before you get into bed. Don't listen to them. You know, if you want a cracker, a saltine, a very crumbly little snacky snack to have, eat it in bed. Who's pooping before they have coffee, though? Because here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. Is while I don't go out of my way to go, I'm going to have coffee and then poop. I don't know. I just feel like because coffee's a natural diuretic, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like it gets you going. Yeah. Right? I don't know. I like to like, I don't know. It just feels weird. It doesn't sound right. It just sounds wrong. It feels wrong. Well, that brings me back to what, what we started talking about earlier is the shit shower shave combo. Because if you think about morning routines, the optimal way to go about it, in my opinion, is you have your coffee, you instigate poop, you have your shit, you take a shower after the shit, and then... Oh, here's where I get tripped up. I never know whether or not to shave before or after. Because sometimes I'm like, if I shave before, then I can hop in the shower, kind of shake off all the shavings. If I shave after, I'm like, I can do the skin routine. I can do um, like all the moisturizing. I can condition. I spend a lot of time thinking about mundane things, huh? <laughs> you know I'm unemployed. I know. <laughs> you know I don't have a job. I'm thinking, I I, cause I feel like I never really think about that but i feel like you just obviously you're not gonna use the bathroom after you fucking shower what kind of chaotic fucking weird shit is that to be like you know i'm gonna do i'm gonna take a shower and then i'm gonna have some coffee because i know the cop but i know the coffee makes my tummy a little weird and it's gonna make me take a shit well sometimes you need to wake up with a shower like that's just oh i'm gonna wake up hop in the shower that's that's just what i'm gonna do and then before you use the bathroom you're going to pee. Do you pee in the shower? I, I don't like to do that. You don't like to or you don't? It's not really something I'm interested in. You don't do it or you don't like to do it's it? It's not something I'm interested in doing. But it's, <laughs> that's not what I asked. <laughs> you say you don't do it or you don't like to do it? No, that's not something that you'll find me doing. Ever? That's not the kind of thing that I do. So are you saying you... Take premeditated measures to pee before getting into the shower? I'm just saying that I use the bathroom like a regular normal person at normal times of the day. Uh Uh And I just don't find myself like in the shower going, oh, my God, you know what I forgot to do? Take a shit. I guess I'll just go right here. Well, okay. (laughs) What? There's a difference. There is a That's difference I'm saying. I don't between shit in taking shower. a shit in the shower. I, don't, I definitely don't shit in the shower. And having to waffle stomp it down. And there's a difference between that and just, you know, you got to pee a little bit. I'm not interested in doing that. And then you take the shower head and you just... Or you pee as close to the drain as possible and then... These are things that I'm not interested in doing. Did you know that uric acid helps uh, cauterize um, calluses? I had one of my foot once. I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I did not know that. Is that really a thing? That is a thing. You know what causes a lot of calluses for people in their active youths? Youth sports. I'm telling you right now, a lot of people I know who played youth sports, they pee in the shower. Are you fucking talking about Ocho? What? Did you not see this? Did Chad Ochocinco talk about he's talking about how peeing in the shower? His secret was <laughs> first of all, I don't even know who the fuck Ocho, I don't even know who the fuck he is. Out of nowhere, he's like a football player or some shit. I guess you don't know about Chad Ochocinco. <laughs> he's like a fucking. He's just like him and is it Chad Smith? I don't know fucking another guy. That's probably right. I don't know. Whatever. He's just popping up. He's like I don't listen. I don't know the footballers. I'm sorry. And he's talking about his secret. His secret was is that he would pee and. 
after the games, he'd put his foot in it. And sometimes he wouldn't have enough pee. So he would get his teammates pee. To piss on his feet? Hot. Good old piss foot Chad Ocho. Is that his name? Chad Ocho. Chad Ocho Cinco. Why is his name? Actually, I don't know. He might have dropped the Cinco. I just, I don't, I don't know. I just know him as Ocho. He was a wide receiver for the Bengals. Was he good? He was very good. Because he talks like he's good. He was very good at a time. Um, this was like 50 years ago? No, no. This was like eight years ago, maybe? It was like For a time. <laughs> eight years ago. He was like like him and like the Reggie Bush era and like somewhere between like the Reggie Bush, Adrian Peterson era. But they were both running backs, so like it's not the same. Randy Moss era, kind of like near the end of that. Does that ring a bell for anything? Uric acid helps um, with the uh, with with calluses. To do with that what you will, you know. So you have a callus, piss on your foot, or if you have a callus on your hands, just uh. If you're a wrestler and you have a callus following you to the ring, piss on them. That's true, especially if it's one of those that, um, just keeps recruiting all of your underlings. <laughs> Um, what other, what other orders are, cause all right, here's, here's the orders of operations. Pasta first, then spaghetti. Wait, what? Pasta is spaghetti. I mean, sorry, pasta, then sauce. Oh, pasta, then sauce. Do you do them separate or do you do like in a whole? I mean, I, I prefer to do them separate, but that's trauma. <laughs> Well, all right. Uh, <laughs> He's like, I'll bite. <laughs> how do I? How how do you want me to respond? <laughs> That's to that? so funny. It's so funny. It's like that funny trauma when we were no. kid. Huh? It's like you try to dress the sauce. You just mix it with the pasta. So I kind of like it that much when I was a kid because it was all mixed in. It was like kind of dry. Mm. Wait, like I was getting beat with pasta. It, like what? walking to school, people were taking pasta sticks. I th- honestly, where I thought you were gonna go with it was like a you know with pasta. And sauce separate, but they're never equal, like kind of thing. Like I thought you were going Why with is everything the, race with you because I thought you were referencing generational well, trauma. Oh my god, everything with you is race. You know, I don't see color. <laughs> well, in that case, wait. <laughs> um, no, but I think like in an optimal like orders of operations kind of morning, I've, I have myself convinced that like once I figure out how to actually have a morning routine rather than just waking up after noon. Ah, so you mean once you get your get up, five minute cold shower, fifteen minute uh, wait wait uh half a banana. Uh huh. Which uh, half? I'll never tell. Fifteen minute run. Mm-hmm. Uh, hearty breakfast. Uh, you forgot about a um hit cardio that uh, focuses on core exercises, so I can get that sweet. No, I'm sorry, you're, you're doing beam. that. You're doing that as you're answering your emails. Yeah. Mm-hmm. While you're boiling your water to go in your oats. And I'm also listening to Alexa tell me affirmations on um on my Echo Dot. Today, you will be a rising flower. You are strong. You are beautiful. You will capture the sun and learn it to the ways of yours. Something in your shopping list is 50% off. Would you like to hear more? You will buy the moon one day, and then everyone on the moon will have to bow down to you. You know. Tell me more. Your daily affirmations. Is that the kind of, is that what a white person affirmation looks like? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, <laughs> okay, order of operation. Okay, this is it's the 1990s. Okay, I'm a comedian. Okay, black person morning versus white person morning. Okay? Mm-hmm. A white person gets up out of bed like this. <sighs> a black person gets out of bed like this. Hey, yo, I'm awake. <laughs> God damn it. Some, some more white people take a shower like this. 
Oh, I'll just use a bar of soap. <laughs> it's like, oh my god! Actually, I'm like, okay, how about this? This is how you know when because we start derailing. Okay, so I just discovered that there's a huge thing about black people feeling the need to be clean because of racism. Oh, uh huh. Classic. Which racism. is why you be seeing black people all to the nines, smelling good, extra clean. You know, you just got it's just living up to the expectations. Oh, because of the internalized racism. Now here's the, here's the thing I notice. Yeah. I notice chest. You know, you didn't mention legs. I get to the legs. They're just last on the list. Do you actively wash your legs? Yeah. Actively washing is not allowing soap. And water to run I down your legs. I actively wash my legs. <laughs> that is a movie. Okay, movie. the only part, the only part I don't actively, actively wash is the bottoms of my feet. And here's the reason: I will, I will passively wash them, and if if I do have calluses on them, I will wash them post haste <laughs> with piss. <laughs> but there's a little fear in me that like statistically if i wash the bottoms of my feet every time and every time after i wash the bottoms of my feet there's a second of like i have no traction oh my god statistically if i do that every time one of those times i'm gonna slip and fall and die in the shower is that is that not a valid fear i feel called out because i realize that i also do not actively watch the bottom arch of my foot but can i say i have an unpopular theory unless hit, hit your floors in your take. house are so filthy or you don't walk around in like slippers or whatever your feet are only dirty they, your feet don't really get dirty your, your feet get moldy because they don't touch anything and they stay in the humid thing inside of your fucking shoes your feet aren't really th- dirty how are they getting dirty you fucking stomping around in fucking well, mud? they're dirty because they're porous. They have so many pores. Oh, okay. They have a lot of pores, mm-hmm. right? They're okay. the most porous part Are of the body. Are you shitting in your shoes? Are you, like, pouring food in your shoes? Okay, it's like the bottom of your fucking... Literally, okay, I will say, I wash, I literally get the tops. I get the sides. Because, again, when I was a kid... Do you get I between remember, the tootsies? You do, I like, do. one of these one I of do. These I always numbers. do that. Because I remember getting a little gunk here. I got a little gunk on my ankle once when I was a kid. And I remember mm-hmm. that. So I always make sure I get nice and clean and a little scrubby scrub, try to get between the toes. But then I never, because you're right. Cause I feel There's like that the, the second. Minute, the minute yeah. you lift up the Whoa. foot, it's a few things. You lift up the foot, it's like multiple. You need your OSHA three points <laughs> of contact. Because <laughs> if you lift up your foot, that's an opportunity. When you go to wash your foot, oh, first of all, make sure you better have everything prepared before you get your mise en place in the shower. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's you gotta you go get your reaching, mise on you your plosses. reaching for a fucking bar of soap or a loofah while your foot's in the air. And it's not where you left That's it? That's how you get final destination. Mm-hmm. That's how you get concussed in the bathtub. And it's even worse if it's a clawfoot tub and then you have like, like you fall out of the tub and then you have like that additional like little extra inch of fall oof that's that's how you get got that's just how you get got that's how they get you and so yeah as far i know i know the whole thing where it's like oh white people don't wash their legs i wash my legs okay so i'm one of the good ones (laughs) you wash your ass yes i wash my ass i you know i hear people say that they're like oh I dated a guy who didn't wash his ass. And I'm just thinking to myself, I'm not even ragging on you. I'm not. That's chill. You're cool. Why would you date somebody who doesn't wash their ass? Like, what has had, like, seriously, I understand you might be dealing with some things. It might be difficult sometimes. Being alone is hard. How are you going to date somebody? How do you not, how do you not just get, like, rashes, chafing? They probably do. And people be out, be out here talking about eating ass. That's wild. That's. Uh, I'm ruminating on that a little bit. And I'm I'm kind of kind of upset. Ruminating. Be better, America. Let's see. We got a couple more little questions. A hill to die on. 
which processes do you swear make something better then you will never give up god that's actually really hard it's so silly because you think about order of operation right yeah so there's always like a right way to do something like you mentioned coffee there's a right way and there's a not as right way and i just i mean really this question was for me to ask you that was this question was for me to ask you because i don't have one because i'm amazing i'm perfect Okay, obviously my coffee just has to... Oh, tell me about your pro- your coffee process. Okay. Your coffee. Okay. Coffee. So lately we've been making an air, I've been making an AeroPress. Mm-hmm. It requires 11 grams of coffee. 11 grams to the T. Uh, yes, ground. Um, How ground? How fine? What's the gradient level? A little finer than I would normally use for a pour over. Then uh, what I do is, is I use 200... It's empty. Fuck. It, I use 200 grams of water. Okay, I allow it to sit for two minutes. How do, you then measure, how do you how do you measure this? With a scale, a tarot scale, obviously. Oh, gross. I then so uh, give it w- at two minutes one brisk swirl to break up any of the loose coffee. I allow it to sit for thirty more seconds. I then apply pressure evenly for the next thirty seconds. About how much psi? If you were to ballpark it, I could. Uh, th- there's literally. Th- Go look at James Hoffman's videos on this. He actually he set up an entire thing where he was get able to get a pre- pressure gauge to tell you how much pressure gets in there. It's pretty significant. Mm. Do you like? No, you like don't really have to. It's not that much. No, no, no. Because honestly, I feel like uh, if you if you take it and you push down really fast, you can, but you're actually not trying to disturb the coffee on the bottom too much. You know, you're actually just trying to. You know, extract the coffee evenly. You're trying to incentivize it to extract. Yes, you're not trying to. Because remember, you saw me earlier. I pushed too hard, and then what happened to the filter? You pushed too hard, and it got so far. But in the end, it didn't really matter. It didn't even matter. The filter scooched a little bit on the inside, and then popped a leak. And then the next thing you know, you get grinds and water in your coffee. And all of these things have a reason, okay? They are not arbitrary. And also, I think that you should fucking salt your pasta water, okay? And that... Ooh, do you need to olive oil your pasta water? That's so... Why? I mean, you could if you want, but that doesn't do anything, <laughs> except for make the pasta slipperier and not stick to the sauce. I mean, what you really should do is you should keep about a cup of the pasta water, right? Then if you're going to be incorporating the sauce into the pasta, you can use the starchy sauce to help thicken that mixture. However, even if you're just making the sauce, I find that using that to help thicken the sauce does help it bind a little bit to the pasta. Maybe it's kismet. Maybe it's just fate since it came from it. It wants to be back where it came from. But it helps and allows the sauce. It comes full circle. To stick to the pasta. And that's how it is. That's the only way it is. And that's it. I refuse. If somebody comes to me and they're like, well, actually... You put olive oil in and it keeps from sticking. And I'm like, uh, actually, it's only sticking because you're crowd- crowding the fucking pan and you didn't even separate the fucking pasta. Okay, you know what I found the other day in the supermarket? You know what I found? What's that? Pot size pasta. Pot size yeah, pasta? It's half size. Huh? So you don't have to break it. It's for people who have small pots. Because uh-huh. the problem is it gets all fucking humpy because you put it in there and, and then it just gets stuck. Yeah, you have to break it apart, allow the water, okay? Because then you just create a starch mass on the outside, and it That's creates true. a gummy consistency. Okay, I am correct. Nobody else is. And this is the hill he will die on. Also, I got a lot of hills. I, I listen. I'll die on some hills. Oh, <laughs> you know I know you will die on some. I'll die hills. on some hills. What's the hill you'll die on? That joke in my head, not one I'll die on. I would die on the hill. So I think one of the one one of the orders of operations that I've perfected is rolling a joint, and I think that there, at least my science to it, I have I have a an approach and a reason, and everything is done with an intention. And so I roll the broccoli stick. The old, uh, the old Devis lettuce baton. <laughs> 
And the way I do it, I think, is both unique to my style, right? Um, but it's not necessarily everyone needs to do it. But it is like if I'm teaching you, this is the most thorough, right way I'm going to teach. And so it all starts out with the crutch aspect, the little um, like usually a card stock of paper um, that creates a certain barrier between ignitable substances and um, the non uh, s- s- your smoke. lips. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a filter. It's a crutch. It's a mouthpiece. It's whatever the fuck you want to call it. But you start with a piece of card stock, usually about three quarters of an inch um, wide by let's say two maybe one and a half inches to two and a half inches long and the way i like to roll it is you fold over right you fold over without without uh creating a seam you create a loop not a seam you fold over a third and then you scooch it back to about a fourth until you create a small semicircle uh gap within it and then you fold that gap you create a small seam at the base of that gap to which then you roll back over and you create a semi springy like it's it it has a bit of sproying to it and so you got to keep it taut that's the that's the part you got to keep it taut and it should look like when you look through it like a kaleidoscope it'll look like a yin yang or just like a uh, uh, kind of thing in the middle of it. You feel me? Then you take your uh, paper and then you have it so that you fold it and you're pinching the mouthpiece at the base of it with about a third to half of it sticking past the paper. So you want it to be jutting out just a little bit. Meanwhile, you take the paper, you hold it in your left hand with a certain amount of tension so that the mouthpiece still has a bit of spring tension within it. You then hold with one hand, you pinch and you add your smoking herbs to the other side and you fill in appropriately until um, starting at a volume that matches the circumference of the of the mouthpiece, maybe a little bit bigger, and then it kind of escalates near the end. So what you're gonna do then is you're gonna start to kind of roll the papers back and forth to create a little rocking motion um, in which you're shaping the uh, the detritus and the um, uh, uh, fauna, flora, flora, not fauna. Fauna yeah. is that'd be like a goat. Yeah, you're just rolling goats, man. <laughs> <laughs> Until it's in an approximate shape of what you're going for. Then, while retaining tension on the mouthpiece, you're going to transfer it to the other hand and poke uh poke in the rest of the the extending part so that way it's flush with the paper what this does now is it creates the tad bit of packed um or or compacted herb near the connection point between the mouthpiece and where the herbs begin right and what that does is creates a whole stability so that way when you're passing it around and stuff, it doesn't start to bow at that area. And then you slowly start to work and tuck and it starts at the tuck at the mouthpiece. And it can be at a diagonal. You can have just part of the corner of the paper start to tuck in so that way it develops a slight coning shape. It should start to look like a baseball bat as as you start to roll and then you don't even really have to do much tucking after the after rolling the first third of it because you'll start to see where the gum line on the paper that's the other thing you want to keep the gum line away but facing you where the sticky glue gum whatever is facing towards you and so you then guide it and you can lick the outside of it to activate the adhesiveness of the gum in order to then create the rest of the shape. You can then uh, use a a small packing tool to push down, Um, not too much. If you over uh, compact it, it will make it difficult for oxygen to get through in the um, 
in the in the smokables and then it will just uh well, it'll put itself out. It won't be able to burn as hot because it'll be too dense and it won't be able to bring in enough oxygen to keep the ember burning at the heat and rate. And It's a whole ordeal. But if you manage to get those 18 steps down, then afterwards you're smooth sailing. Super easy. You know what? I, I have a hard time finding any fault there. I do think that maybe perhaps I could pull back two more, in my hours. Two more, like about half a centimeter uh, uh, when you're doing the uh, the filter. But, you know, that's just nitpicking. It's uh, you could. You could. That one's where I just say, you know, take some artistic I'll be honest, license. Actually, I'm going to be real. I was having trouble. That's why. Because I was trying to line it up too perfectly with the paper. Then what happens is it gets shunted into the paper as you're rolling. Mm -hmm. So you need to give it a little bit of leeway. Yep. Oh, God, look at this. I hate you. are right. And then once you get the the gum line sealed up, you want to take the end part because it shouldn't go all the way to the end. If it goes, if you have smoking stuff, substance to all the way to the end of the paper, you want to pack that down. Give yourself like half a centimeter at the most you can you can even give yourself like a quarter centimeter i know i'm switching to metric now so folks at home you're gonna have to follow me with the other side of your ruler um but you want to have just enough so that way you could pinch it with your either index or middle finger and thumb and you're gonna want to just <laughs> and just kind of rock it back and forth in your hands and what that'll do is create a certain centrifugal force that'll send the uh, herbs compacting ever so slightly down towards the mouthpiece. Now, here's the important part. The reason why we had to retain tension on the mouthpiece from the beginning is because at this step, the quick and easy compaction method, if you don't retain tension in your mouthpiece, it is going to fly out the other side. Think about it as a keystone and an arch. Okay, I'm thinking about it. So you have your blocks that go all the way up, and then they start to go into a trapezoidal pattern. Now, the um, architecture, the the whatever, the physical ramifications of this is the pressure will be forced out in different vectors and in varying, well, equally varying vectors at different angles. So that way you can still retain um, suspension. And so in doing so, you're kind of creating... Um, like a like a triangle, a cone falling into another cone thing to where the base of the cone is too wide to exit through the base of the small or through the exit of the the smaller cone. This guy is the fucking master architect of fucking joints. Jesus, I got tired. I don't even want to roll that shit. I, I'm tired. I'm ready to go to sleep. There is a science to this. There is a right way to do this. <sighs> However, you have also been rolling a different kind of joint lately. And it's not my style, but it is still, it's still it's good. Roller, so it's still cares? good. Yeah, yeah. You're just using a roller. That's the, that's my beef with rollers. Is it takes the the artisticness. The art. The <laughs> it's, we it can just, get there now, or we can be artistic about or it. Or we can actually put some goddamn thought into this, and we can like make art together. Or, you know, you could just get a machine and get it manufactured. We make art together. <sighs> I'm a little worked up. I'm a little... I'm a, I, can, I can tell. Oof. I'm a little worked down. Oh, man. I was I was going. I that had was... A, oof, you, I just went a full, beautiful mind. Somebody knows their, 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 uh, their plant product. You know, I know physics, bro. I know, I know geometry. No, I cannot get him started. I cannot get him started. There's a there's a right way to do things, and then there's a not as right way to do things. Before we start wrapping up, do you remember what the actual orders of operations stand for? You about Pem you talking about Pemdas or whatever? Pemdas, please, yeah. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which is actually kind of not correct, but that what? Yeah, but that's only because wait. That's only because it's it's like kind of it's oh I had to I had to it's effectively it's effectively correct, but like for elementary school junior high school math. 
You know what I mean? Like, well, no, it's not wrong. It's a, it's just a universally agreed upon. There like, are. There's alternate complex magic math rules that we. I don't look at me. I'm repeating things I heard on TikTok. <laughs> okay, repeat them. Let me know. I also have a math book. I was reading about this. Okay, leave me alone. Okay. So Pem dot. D- it is, but like those are all high level abstractions of more of deeper math rules. You know what I mean? So, so parentheses. Parentheses. Exponent. Exponents. Uh, please excuse my uh, multiplication. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Please excuse my dear division. Mm-hmm. Addition. Subtraction. But the addition, subtraction, multiplication, multiplication, and division are are in their kind of they're in their own brackets. Yeah, yeah. And you're meaning to tell me that that's all been bullshit no, this whole it's, time? No, it's well, it's it's abstraction, right? Because here's the thing: if you go into a situation, you're like, well, what's uh, would take one item and one item put them together, you have two items, right? Yeah. But I guess technically, since the items aren't exactly equally shaped, they're not the same exact size. You might have two point zero 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 one of items, right? But it doesn't benefit you in everyday conversation to fucking just waste all your time talking about minutia or specificity when effectively, right, the rule basically just like works. But there's reasons why. So why do you do it in that order? What about the rules make you need to do it in that order? Because those are the rules. Why? Because because the parentheses just mean like, hey, hey, buddy, hey, do this first. This why? Because sometimes if you do things not first, then it's like that's not how this works. But but why? Because of factorials. Do you have to do it first? Because factorials. Because you don't have to do it first. Because if you do like a, if you do a thing. Where it's like eight minus four squared. So you're gonna be like, oh, okay, so it's it's eight minus four is four squared, that's sixteen. But then someone's gonna be like, Well, no, it's actually like eight squared minus four squared, which is not sixteen. It is something else that is a different number. Twelve times twelve is one to forty four. And that's so, what I know. And so instead, you have to be like, well, because 64 minus 16 isn't also 16. Instead, you have to be like 64 plus 15 minus 64 minus 16 plus 64 minus 60. Wait, shit, wait. How to factor? No. Oh, oh, damn it, calculus. It's a headache. Oh, and that's why we need orders of operations. That is. It's. Not simply the rule to, because to make it happen. It's oh, to simplify. It's because it's eight minus four times eight plus four, right? I Isn't lost that? the plot. Fuck. <laughs> God. T- can I tell you I failed calculus without telling you I failed calculus? I tell you I went to school for engineering and I've passed calculus <laughs> multiple times. You had to pass it multiple times? <laughs> oh, nerd. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I, don't, I, d- I don't remember all these things, but I know that there's reasons why we do things in certain orders. It's just sometimes, for the life of me, they go back to just being told I was supposed to do something in a certain order, and now I don't even know if what I know is why I know it or if it's just a manufactured reason for why I know something that doesn't make any sense what at all. If you're the one in front of the whiteboard and you realize that it's not Pem to Bass. It's Mass to Pem. Some extra Whoa. some extra letters in there too. Pem de Malamos? Because then you start then It's you, Papadopoulos. You Who knew math was Greek all along? Lati- longitudinal multiplication. You discovered it. Whoa. I just found the fourth dimension. Suck a dick, nerds. Futurama, because... I'm I'm tired. Look at me. Don't look at me. Should we wrap it up? Let's wrap it up. 
This has oh, been. Oh, fuck it. This has been. Was that in good taste? Was the wrong. Now we know how we know what we know and why we know how to do it in the way that it's supposed to be done. And also, it's not always supposed to be done that way, but sometimes there's reasons why it's done in the way that it's done and not the ways that it's not done in the way that it isn't What done. if it's done the way that you were told that it's done, then you realize the way that you were told that it's done is the wrong way to do it. But then you realize that actually the way you were told to do it was the right way in the first place. But the reasons why you were doing it the way that it was done weren't the right reasons, but they were the right things for the wrong reasons. Just like drinking is not always required. But it is recommended. God, it's fucking math. Oh, my God. We might have to orders of operations is better next time so that we don't just get wasted on these pseudo martinis. Podcast first. Podcast first. Then, then cocktail.